a new decade. For the hawkers, though, it's business as usual. The call to duty is routine, but not for some. <laughs> Food from the streets that became a country's pride. Through times good and bad, the cooks fed the country. Here at the table are their stories of generations and aspirations. Voices from our hawker culture, inside the belly of a nation. It's a lot of work, even if it's for a single dish. So the preppers start early. Many do this as part of their family duty. Fathers and sons, Mothers and daughters, aunts, cousins, spouses, or just friends, these hawkers build upon their relationships to expand their businesses, to continue the heritage. They keep on going despite the difficulties and challenges in their daily strides, and they share their stories with us as the year unfolds. In the eastern part of Singapore, a father and son team is maintaining a business into its third generation. I really don't want to become a hawker in the first place. But after NS, I actually got the work outside. But my father got no one to help him at the shop. So I just went in, helped. Got no interest, but you know, sort of kena force. <laughs> I'm Sheikh Abdul Hanan. I'm 32 this year. And I'm doing a um, nasi brandy business at Gelang Serai Market. My name, nama saya, Sheikh Abdul Hamid bin Sheikh Daud. The business started in 1964 uh, during my grandfather's time, Sheikh Daud. He sold mutton soup, the leg part, the ribs, and he sell white rice, got fish curry, got uh, fried fish, vegetables, all sorts of vegetables. His menu was a lot. Uh, so he and his wife, my grandmother, they both together started this business. Dulu sini Changi Pasar, banyak Indian jual sayur, jual itu, jual ini, jual kain, jual baju. Dulu India sini banyak. Ha, sekarang semua jual ada. Dulu tak ada anak sini, itu kedai pun kasih balik. Lah. Dia balik India. Lah. Dulu saya nasi putih, saya tengok berani jalan terus bagus. Nasi putih saya tak mau belajar lah sambil jual nasi berani. Lah. Lagi senang, jual macam aja. Ayam, kambing. Nasi biryani is spiced yellow rice with gravy and meat. Indian in origin, the biryani in Singapore takes on unique flavours and a range of spellings. Uh, for my stall is... Oh. <laughs> B-I-R-Y-A-N-I. B-R-I-Y-A-N-I. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I also forget the spelling. <laughs> Some call it biryani. I think in Singapore also they have different spelling. But I think that doesn't matter because it's still the same thing. It's the yellow rice with mutton, chicken. The Briani stall has been at the centre for more than 40 years, with Father Hamid at the helm. A recognisable character, partly because of his cap. Ini untuk kebersihan cantik orang tengok lawa putih, orang cakap janeru. <laughs> I think in Gelang, me and my father wear it. Lah. This cap is a Nehru cap, so this is like a trademark to my shop. Lah. So everywhere I go, they will like see me. Oh, this one is Hamid San, so they know me as Hamid San. It's the cap that plays a part. Lah. Uh, I'm running the store now, so my father will come and go like as and when he wants, lah, because he's the big boss. Briyani meat, be it chicken or mutton, is cooked to the same spice paste or rempa, and further layered with more spices, chilies, and herbs. The mutton gets the yogurt, then it stews away. Uh, actually, it takes about at least three hours lah, for everything, complete everything's ready. Today, the rumpa base has been prepped by Father Hamid. Ali dah taruh Ali. Ali belum. Semua belum, down belum. My mom speak good Tamil, but my father uh, <laughs> the Tamil like <laughs> a bit off on uh, uh, for me I understand but I don't speak. Uh, but at home is Malay. The backbone of biryani is the long and thin-grained basmati rice that has to be washed 5 times. Uh, rice about 25 kilo, lah, so it's like one bag. That one can serve about 300 plus to 200. Uh, so that's like for weekdays. Lah. 
a lot goes into the staple, including the Singapore edition of pandan leaves. Then, a whole shower of onions to flavour the oil. I've burned this so many times. Because you concentrate on other things and you forget about this pot, then the onion gets burned. More ingredients are added, including ginger paste and evaporated milk. And then a bit of QC before the final steam. He has been tasting this for I think like 50 years, 40 years, so he got the perfect taste. He's the QC guy for all the pots. The rice in nasi biryani is cooked separately from the meat, unlike its cousin, the dum biryani, a feature on big occasions where the meat is steamed together with the rice. The biryani dah masak, kita kena masak daging dulu. Langit dampuk, dah okay, tiga sukumpuk. Dah kita kena sukumpuk, kita rebus, rebus, beras dah kita rebus. Biryani dah beras rebus. Dah rebus, tiga suku masak, kita angkat, terus air dia, kita taruh dalam nasi, dalam daging. Daging dah tiga suku masak. Tapi saya bilang, ini tak ada dam. Semua sini semua pakai separate-separate, lauk daging, lain daging. Nasi lain, lauk lain lah. Sini banyak orang suka itu juga lah, paling senang. Boleh simpan sampai malam, boleh besok, boleh simpan. Dia tak ada rosak. Dia masuk air sebok lah. By 11, the waiting customers can now be served. All hands on deck. Customers, uh, most of them are familiar faces, regular customers. And then we have new generation. Some come to my store, they say, I've been eating yours, brandy for 20 years. My mother brought me here. So I so like, eh, oh, seriously? Uh, like, oh. He like very kiasu. He always want everything, you know. But for my style, like, when I go slow and steady, you know, customer can wait. But he like, hey, go for the customer. <laughs> old people have old style of doing things. So for my new generation, new style. So sometimes clash also, lah. Yeah. But the patient wise, I think we cannot fight, lah. The old generation, uh, they are really very, very patient with customers, you know, with the surroundings. Uh, for us, I think uh, that's the thing that I need to improve on, lah. Being patient. Anak bapa ada jaga okey lah. Kita dapat kawan sekitar teruk sangat lah. We stay separately but we still get to meet each other every day. Yeah. By four in the afternoon, the business is done for the day. Around the same time, another father and son are about to begin their evening session. They live and work together. My name is Walter Tay. They sell two of Singapore's most beloved dishes, cha kui tiao and chai tao kui, the so-called carrot cake, which is a misnomer. There is no carrot. I repeat, no carrot. Only the white radish, or daikon, or chai tao. Furthermore, it's cooked with chopped dried chai tao, called chai po. The roots of this dish can be traced to the Teochews in China. Singapore River. Mr. Tay has been selling the dish for more than 50 years, originally starting out in a coffee shop in Tuapayo. Back 
差不多成六十年，往至少啊，未查过咱家己变从嗰度落去白啊，落去查啊，变作半河路咸啊。At the heart of the dish are blocks of steamed radish cakes. The taste no longer make them by hand. Very few do. This stall, however, still braves through the laborious process. Mr. Tay's second son is Walter, seemingly a poster boy for those who'd leave a life of glamour for hard labour. Before he got into the business, Walter was an air steward, followed by a messy venture that turned out to be a Ponzi scam and ended up burning all his friendships and connections. How come I got good intention? I just wanted to make it big, you know? How come life got to turn out like that? I can see from his, like, uh his um, expression in his day-to-day -day life. I can see that he's very sad, but he needs to get over this thing himself. I opened it, but I didn't get to see it. I was able to get a job, to get a job, to get a job. I was able to get a job, to get a job. I was able to get a job, 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 to get a job. I'm very fortunate. Friend actually told me to really go full into hawker because ultimately this business belongs to my family. So I hit his advice and then went ahead. While father and son run the Admiralty branch, mum and sister manage the business at the original stall in Bukit Panjang. It's also their home turf. Between the hours of 2 to 4 every day, the family takes a break. The siblings skip lunch today. There's work to be done. So ESSEC University invited me to give a talk to uh, their 100 students. It was an international school. Then they have this imaginative week in Singapore. So it's for them to uh, talk about entrepreneurship, business, pioneering spirit, and thinking out of the box. I'll share with them our history, our food history, uh, our hawker culture. Kerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerakerak
Giving a hand are Walter's mum and sister. After all, it's family ties that keep the trade going. But for some, it's not without personal pain. When I lie down on the bed, I think of the past. I cry myself. I suffer a lot. The earliest hawker centres were built in the CBD to accommodate thousands of peddling vendors. Many stalls in this one can trace a lineage back to their street days. One stall has a link to a man who never wore shoes. Never wear shoes his whole life. Man, no shoes. Everybody called him. You are very stingy. He want to save money. He's stingy, want to save money because he got a family. Grand Aunt runs the family business known for its Cantonese style zita, literally cook and fry. Its signatures are ho fan and fish head bee hoon. The head belonged to the Sang Yi, or Toman fish, or snake head. The bihun is slightly thicker than normal. The dish is served in a stock that is white, not from milk, but from great technique. The business used to be quiet in the daytime, until two years ago, when there was an infusion of fresh blood. My name is Debbie Yen. I'm turning 30 this year. So I'm Cayman, 23 years old, currently studying full-time at uh, NUS. Come here and then I'll just set up the store, do some prep work for the lunch service, and then we'll wait for customers to come for the lunch. Debbie's in charge of the lunch service with a menu that's Zita inspired. I was very inspired by the poke bowls to do the Chinese version, but the whole poke bowl concept requires me to have a space to put all my ingredients. I added a little bit a different component to it, so things like a battered enoki, which acts like a tempura or adds a little bit crunch to the dish, or things like onsen eggs. This is for our signature dish, uh, the fish head bihun. So to portion out evenly, uh, we need to have the head, the fins, the cheek in every different bowl. We started out with Cayman and I, uh, but that was Cayman before his uh, uni. And then when his uni started, uh, his mom came down to help. During the crunch time, she's going to turn into a superwoman, basically. <laughs> yeah. So this stock, it's our base for a lot of dishes. There is fish bones, and then there is pork bones, Dried fishes, ginger, and things like this. So these are the dried fish. It's a very fragrant fish, but it's going to be more fragrant after I actually give it a little bit of a fry. Yeah. The dried bones of the sole fish, also known as tea po, are a traditional umami secret, often added to soups and stocks. By 11, the dress code at the centre goes a bit more upmarket, as office workers flood in. The zita bowls fill a lunch vacuum which the business has had for many years. After I came out from army, Debbie like asked me, hey, want to do something interesting, why not try lunch? What is it? Like Hong Lim is very crowded for lunch, so we can hit two services like, instead of one. Break time is a few short hours before the start of dinner prep. Today, Debbie agrees to a student interview. Can you like, give a brief like, history of the song? Right, right. Uh, this is actually started by my great-grandfather in the 1940s. And then subsequently, uh, my grand-auntie, yeah, whom is also running it right now, uh, she just took over from the dad. And um, 
shifted into the hawker centre where they stopped the paddling. And then for myself, previously uh, I was working in a cafe. I have a little experience in FMB, I would say. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, but um, I've never thought uh, that I would come back here to work or to, to cook. Evening comes. A change of shifts. The older staff arrive. Some of us have been with us for a very, very long time. So we have uh, Achoyanti, which is the female helper. She does a lot of the back-end stuff for us. We also have our head chef, Golo. Uh, he has been with us for many years as well. So my aunt tend to only uh, trust people with a bit more experience. She's more comfortable with working with uh, elderly, I think. Maybe they can just click, I, I don't know, maybe it's the age gap, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I think she's more comfortable with that. They are so full of experience. They are full of technique. I can learn their ways and see if it's efficient and I can improve accordingly. The dynamics change when Grand Aunt comes to the fore. No, it's entirely hers. Is this is really important to her and she's important to us. So I think these are little things that we can help her to ease her lifestyle. Lah. And on top of that, I don't mind being a hawker. I want to learn things. I think it's a very interesting trait. And I see an opportunity to be able to maybe take it as a stepping stone or learn anything or gain any experience. So I thought, hey, why not? NTOC voucher. Just now I do interview, they give me one. Yeah, so basically, my aunt is number one. And then uh, my cousin, Debbie, she's number two. And then I'm like number last few. Lah. I'm not that important. Lah. I'm just like a little puppet, lah, in a sense, yeah. The stall occupies two units, back to back. This allows for the pros to take over the night shift and the beginners to test their skills. So what are you cooking? Xi Zhao Hong Fan. There we have burn. There we have burn. Redo, right? Yeah, very fast, only. Eh? Very fast, eh? Congratulations. Right. Level unlock. Oh, I think. <laughs> Ever since I was young, she was always like someone that my family respected. So like we always like treat her like our own self. Because she has no kids, so she treats us very well. In a sense that like we have to repay her la. like you gotta treat her well too. And it's willingly, la. it's not something that I'm forced to. It's like, yeah, so it's like I come down willingly all the time. So yeah. Grand aunt never married, and although she had siblings, she was the only one who devoted her life to continuing her father's business. When I lie down on the bed, I think of the past, I cry myself. My father only loved the son, never loved the daughter. Even when we walk so hard, he never cared about us. Cantonese food is one of the major Chinese cuisines of the world, widely loved and recognised. Cantonese chefs are the argonauts of food who travel far and wide with their culinary skills. This chef is a kind of sultan of steam who works in what feels like a personal sauna set in Heg Road Hawker Centre. My name is Chika Chong, I'm 56 years old. I'm selling the Dan Tong and the Jing Song. 
港式嘅食物，每一種燉湯唔一樣啊！我十幾種燉湯。Chef is from Hong Kong and met his Malaysian-born wife in Singapore. In a previous life, he was an executive at some of the best fine dining restaurants in town. A misstep landed him in hot soup. 發生嗰陣時，應該新加坡人都好清楚噶啦。關於嗰個收回購嗰個問題咧，變咗搞到好多香港師傅都要罰錢有罰錢，坐監有坐監。啊，我就係其中一個。Chef Chick served the jail sentence, paid the fine, but never returned to his previous life. 出翻嚟之後，咁跟住就要做咩咯？即係如果你要做翻餐館咧，係比較艱難，係比較艱難，因為人哋可能會唔相信你，所以我咪好多都自己創業咯，自己做咯。我就說錯了就認啦，啊，還了就算了，我也不會說給我先生一百八千的壓力。我是說你最重要你本身開心，啊，賺多賺少不用緊，啊，就是這樣，因為我們做夫妻嘛，有今生沒來世嘛，就是這樣啦，啊。They restarted in 2010 at a hawker centre in Geylang Serai, far from their home in Yishun. As a trained chef, he has many styles of cooking, but steaming is his main mode of operation. Ah, in my life, I've done it for 40 years. I'm also a cook, but I'm not doing it here. Cooking is always hot. Chef is kept some of his old working methods. And tools that are uncommon in a hawker centre. This is very accurate. We enter the hall, they use all these things. They are very clean. 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 They met during the restaurant days. She worked in the hall and he in the kitchen. Potato, today you think a little bit, right? Yes, it's very soft. I'm going to eat the egg. Everyone is here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to buy the egg. The egg. Many hawkers form long-term relationships with their ingredients suppliers. Without that kind of history, a startup hawker would have to shop around for a deal. Every time you ask, then he's friendly. A little bit, he's the most friendly. Who's your friend? That guy. He's very nice. 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 Even though he's known for his soups, Chef Chick has plenty of items off the menu and in his mind. 
可能我哋做廚師做咗耐。始終你叫我買嗰幾樣嘢，我係唔得嘅，因為我做呢行我真係興趣而入行嘅，所以我有時都會做下私房菜嘅。Today's off-menu item is his take on a local chi chong fan. At its simplest, the rolled rice sheets are steamed and served with a sweet sauce called tin jiang. It is something else in the chef's vision, with steamed prawns and roasted garlic. The signs are up. Lunchtime draws crowds from the neighboring offices to the center. Today, you have a meal? Chang pen zhen xia. Chang pen. Yes, steamed prawn. Sometimes I also get bitchy. Why? I can't get up to the table. You are outside looking at me. There is a pressure. Wow, it's a big pressure. It's really a big pressure. It's a big pressure. It's a big pressure. 我顧客咩人都有，但係好多都係顧客介紹顧客，即係我係靠口碑。誒，最係一般係老啲嘅，同埋經濟效經濟會好啲嗰啲嗰啲客嚟，即係好多都係老闆嚟。但係最近我發覺我嘅顧客好多後生仔嚟，即係好多。<笑> the soups are the first to sell out. By two. It's lights out for a two-hour break, with only one exception. This is the exact of one house. I long here, long time ago already. Yes, it's a special customer. It's already very familiar. Every day they come to eat. Every day they come to eat. They come to eat. They come to eat. They come to eat. You make a mistake, but make him better. <laughs> make him a better man. Even though it's break time, chef doesn't sit due to a back problem. His body is really bad. Sometimes he has a little bit of a problem. Then his heart is not very good. I'm also very worried about him. Our time of making business is only five hours. From 12 to 2 hours. Then from 4 to 7 hours. Sometimes from 7 to 7 hours, I've already closed. Sometimes I see it's too hard, I just say, I'm going to stop today. I can't do it anymore. Because... 在里面真的是很辛苦，那种热度，嗯。两公婆做最好，不开头我自己都唔好意思。之前话娶个老婆，梗系享压福，哇做到佢真，真系好辛苦。开头我系做哇十六七个钟头，哇真系攰咯。嗰阵时，不过我觉得系最唔好意思，就系对住我啲仔女，因为嗰时好细啊，因为我哋翻工咧。自己啊，叫佢哋，因為我哋呢度都冇親戚，因為佢哋要自己翻學，自己係打包買飯食，所以而家佢哋冇佢冇學壞，我都已經真係好開心。兩個仲入埋讀大學。The two work very hard. Even after they stop selling, they are still at it, cleaning up. It'll be way past 11 before the workday ends for them. And it's around that time that another husband and wife team are just getting into the swing of things. They sell Oloa. My name is Lim Wee Huat. My wife helping me. At my store is helper. At home is my wife. To put it simply, Oloa is an oyster omelette. But there's more. We'll get to that later. One hidden element in Oloa is the chili paste that's cooked with it. It goes in by default. Mostly 80% they want chili. La. If they don't want chili, they will inform me. Say, uh, Oloa one plate, I know chili, okay? If they didn't say no chili, I will add chili. For the last 40 years, the couple has been selling Oloa with business hours from evening to midnight, seven days a week. They turn up for work when many others are done for the day. It's an exception today. It's their weekly chili frying duty. Uh, this one is chili piham jokwa. The paste is made with many building blocks of flavors, starting with blachan. Now the oil is hot, la, so I put the blachan inside until the blachan melts. Onion, onion, 
two mini can really. Two mini. Add the garlic, garlic, sing tao garlic, put until brown color. Now I put heavy. This one is uh, chili press. Uh, this one is chili padi. The chili enhances the oloa in ways that are indescribable. The couple is so known for this dish, they're nicknamed oyster limbs. So, what exactly is oloa? Oloa is a uh, Teochew way, or Chien Si Hokkien way. Uh, this is the, the same. The same is fried oyster. Or Neng Si Oyster and Eggs Neng Ka O Tia. I Bo Hung Bo Mikai. To make a decent oloa, you need a base of batter which adds a crispy yet gooey texture to the dish. Then fry it up, top with oysters and serve. Sounds easy. The batter is a mixture of sweet potato and rice flours. Mr. Lim uses the same old pot handed down by his father. My father taught me how to Actually, he escaped. China la, ikea kangko bo de la, Singapore de, tapi siapa eh Frank Kai cha olua la, so ijo tampo xiao huang la, ben ijo xiao huang deo tampo eh seng gong la, eh seng gong deo i i macam mai let go la, jadi ai cuit sekali kian la ijo la, deo eh faham yang eh pek wa jo la, pek wa jo jo deo kui jam ni deo kade, deo up to now la, up to now lo lak cik lak jam ni deo, jik jam do sa pe deo kade, jam do jia jia pek kua la, ta pa wen i la. More than six million eggs have gone through his hands as he moved from his pushcart days to the hawker centre. And he makes more than one version of Oloa. There's the standard crispy one and the not-so-standard wet one. Wet version. And there's yet another version which Mr. Lim created. Oloa, my or oyster omelette with no oysters. The couple has been at this very same stall for more than 40 years, every night, except for the weeks off when they go on extended holidays. As night hawkers, the couple live by a different time zone. It's way past one in the morning, but the night is still young. Tonight's dinner option is a place close to where it all began during Mr. Lim's pushcart days in Jalan Besar. Outside Samdong Road, ah. กูจะเอ็มปุ๊กกับเอ็งเอ็งเฮ้ยทัวเอ็งชาทัวเจ้ากูจะต่อว่าเข้าจริงจะกังโคล่ะอ่าหล่อโหว่าไม่กล้าจ
。哎呀，誒，住呢紙度啊，好方便嘅，我都唔捨得搬。Many hawkers depend on close relationships to survive, but can one thrive if the business is built on just friendship? We we don't talk anymore. We've met them before in a previous season, but as the year rounded off, things turned sour. They were partners who made gains on hawker-style burgers, then they split up. It's sad to 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 have. Friendship that we built, you know, lost. We we don't talk anymore. You know, sometimes as things get bigger, then we start to have different visions on how we want to bring up the company and everything. I left my previous brand to actually start up my own brand called Ashes Burnit. Same place, same area. I didn't pull any staff or you know any of them over. Some of the staff, when they came over, they informed me that they wanted a new challenge, starting from ground zero. You know, we actually added different things like mac and cheese. We have salads. Basically, the whole menu we actually balanced it out, so it doesn't actually focus us just on burgers and fries. This time, we're actually serving charcoal, but ashes is more of a charcoal barbecue. So that's the theme that we are actually looking at. Right now, I don't have any partners. I'm actually doing it alone. Uh, as a sole director, it's a bit hard, but it's a challenge for me that I'm willing to take. The Chinese New Year period is usually marked by a mass closure of shops and eating outlets. Hawkers across the island take time out for a short holiday, an opportunity for those who choose to stay open. Chinese New Year, Chinese people all shop close, so they look for Indian food. Malay food, so the business during Chinese New Year, I say, is good lah, because I have regular customers. They order not very big amount, but it's small amount. Sometimes they send for church. These kind of people are my customers lah, so I have to settle all these customer, their orders first before I start selling. For Chinese New Year, the two days first, okay lah, good lah. To get into the spirit of things, a two-week-long food bazaar is taking place in Geylang Serai. It's after hours on their usual trading day. Shafiq and his team decide to set up a pop-up stall at the bazaar. It's uh, called Bazaar Lamba. It's in uh, Wisma Gelang. So we'll be there for two weeks to, to build more of a brand awareness. Way past midnight, the pop-up is almost ready. Just across the road, Chef Chick has an early start to prepare a special order for reunion dinner. It's an elaborate Hong Kong dish, traditionally eaten during Chinese New Year. Called pun choy, meaning basin dish, because it is served in a huge basin upon which are layers and layers of good stuff. Pun choy needs at least 24 hours of preparation. And this is why chef needs a good head start and a bit of quiet to focus. The stall is closed for business. One of the first tasks is to tackle dried seafood, like scallops, sea cucumbers and oysters, tinned abalones and dried mushrooms. They are reconstituted through gentle bracing or flash frying. Bun Choi tests the skills of a chef and his patients. It has a long cooking time, requiring a range of techniques. The aromatics used are fried first to enhance their natural flavors. Only then are they added to the remaining ingredients. Pun Choi also has layers of meat, like pig's trotters, which are braised in soy sauce and belly cooked with nam yu, the red fermented tofu cubes. The last step for the day is steaming. Then leave the ingredients aside for the next 12 hours. The order will be picked up at 11 in the morning. The dish has to be eaten hot. 
But with six basins to complete, the pressure is on. The layering begins. At the base are steamed cabbages and radishes. They'll be soaking up juices from the top layers. Over these go the meats. The items, steamed the day before, are poached in a bracing liquid. The luxury items crown the dish. Then steam again. The finish is a thick sauce made with the bracing liquid. It's the first day of trading for Ash's pop-up booth at the bazaar. This will be the first time Shafiq's new brand makes its presence as a pop-up. New on the menu is chicken nuggets. A queue forms, but it's for the booth next door. Lion dancers reawaken businesses as they return after their short break. Troops go around to bless them with good luck. Many visit neighbourhood F&B outlets. Food plays a strong symbolism in this art form. This troupe uses live crabs with menacing pincers. They represent the evils of the world which the lions will defeat, bringing harmony and prosperity for the year ahead. But little do we know, the Year of the Rat has other plans. I had a short break and then I went for a short holiday. Yeah, and then COVID-19 happened. And people got scared, you know, uh, crowded places cannot go. You know, all these things, when they, they, they really like, don't want to go. La. Yeah, of course there's impact of this virus. No, I don't think so only in my line, you know. If, I, I think in almost every line, there's more or less impact. How badly will the hawkers be affected as the year unfolds? Their stories continue in the belly of a nation. <laughs>